Okay. Okay, this is my mom, Robin Rice. <laughs> and this is Alexis. And she's going to teach you how to create the little cherry oh, block. The cherry block. On the pillow. Okay. So this is our my first attempt. So okay. I personalized this one by putting a little anchor on there for... Who do we put the anchor on there for? Your daughter? Your other daughter? <laughs> <laughs> and she's an officer in, in the Navy. Navy. There you go. In the submarine force. So we put a little anchor on here because it's a patriotic pillow for her. All right, so we're going to do the cherry block. So in your directions, everything. Um, we're going to really be flipping between pages five. And the cherry block is on page uh, 18 and 19 in your manual here. We are going to be doing the block by block quilting, which means you are individually making each block and then the batting will not be in the seam allowance and uh, then you can sew the pieces, the blocks together. Okay, so each one is individually made and then the quarter inch does not have this, the batting in it and then which makes it less bulky to sew the seams together. So Alexis is going to help us out here. <laughs> and so um, with this page, on page seven, you'll see that our background uh, for the cherry block is this gray stripe here. And it says to cut it in a six and a half by six and a half, which I've already done. Alexis is going to go, we're going to take Kimberbell fusible backing, which I've cut to six and a half. And she's going to iron that on the wrong side. Of the fabric, don't make it on the right side. Well, okay, so, so there. How yeah. much I do know about sewing. <laughs> okay, and our stabilizer is Kimberbell Light Mesh Stabilizer here. So, um, and then we have, if you look at the uh, materials needed page on page seven, if uh, with a fabric scrap, it's the first red fabric scrap. It is a cherries, um, the right cherry, and it is this little scrap of fabric here. Now I got a much bigger piece when I got my kit, so it just calls for two and a half by two and a half. So again, I'm going to have Alexis put the fusible backing on that, which causes less puckering in the, uh, when you embroider it. So here's the two and a half inch square, and she's gonna go iron that piece. Good job. All right, I'm gonna set that over by the sewing machine. Um, the next fabric down on the fabric list is um, the leaf, which is the green. It was the second green um, box here, which is from a fabric scrap. And it says cut a two and a half by two and a half inch uh, block on that piece of fabric. This was my, this is the fabric. And then I cut a two and a half out of that. And again, I'm going to have Alexis go and iron the fusible backing on there. And then turning the page, the to the embellishments on page nine, the other cherry that is on that block, hold on, the other cherry on the block is from a red leather. And so that's actually on page nine of the embellishment. Um, and it says cherry red embroidery leather, which is also used for the firecracker and the cake and small pinwheel. So um, this, was just a two and a half by two and a half inch block that I cut off of the full size that they gave me. All right, so that we're not going to put back because it's pretty sturdy and it's not gonna cause puckering with the leather. So I'm not putting the fusible backing on that. So we have the green for the leaf, one cherry, the other cherry, and then we have the background fabric 
you can do it this way or this way. Which way did I put I put it horizontal on my pillow, but you can do it vertically as well. It just doesn't matter. So, all right. Um, so that's your fabric. You will need a piece of batting. Okay. Um, this is just the size of my background fabric right now. And then we'll be, we'll trim that away as we stitch. So what else do we need? I don't know. Oh. Um, um, the thread colors, I'm using just a red thread and red bobbin. And for the leaf is a green to match the, the fabric. fabric. Thank you. I can't read the what the fabric is. This year I got my our, my youngest daughter bought me a big kit of uh, 40 spools of, I think it's brother thread um, for it Christmas. And so that's what I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> so unprofessional. It just, it just says it's polyester embroidery. <laughs> yeah, it's polyester embroidery thread. And then I have matching bobbins. Um, so once you have your fabric, um, we'll be flipping. We'll be doing the block by block quilting. So turning to page 18. Um, and we're going to be following this block by block quilting. So we have the, um, the fusible mesh cutaway, which is this uh, uh, stabilizer we're going to be using. So we're going to hoop that. Uh, this is not not a very big block, so it doesn't take a very big hoop. And can you hand me that hoop right over there, please? Obviously, I'm not professional like <laughs> Kristen is to do this. I am sewing on a Bernina 830. Um, and so this is my 145 by 255 uh, hoop. So it's Bernina, it's Swiss, everything's in metric. Um, do you need me to put it over so that I show how to do this part? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm taking my hoop. I'm just gonna cut a piece of stabilizer. I'm hoping this is gonna be wide enough. If not, I'll have to recut a new piece. This is just the scrap that's left here. So um, I always turn my hoop. So on a Bernina, the arrow goes towards your belly, but because it, it hoops on this side. Um, so I always just, I'm standing in front of my machine so it goes the direction I need it to go. Um, so my hoops are older, um, oh, sorry, and so I have this, what do you call this stuff? Wrap, pre-wrap. Oh, uh, like, like you use for wrap. The medical wrap. And, um, it, cause over time my, my hoops have lost, you know, they don't, they're not as tight as they once were. So this helps, um, and it has a grip to it too. So when I hoop it, um. It helps grip the staplers. Oh yeah, we got plenty. All right, I'm just gonna tighten that. It's pretty tight. That's... And so there, the hoop is ready to go. So we have that. We have all our pieces. One cherry, the other cherry. And again, remember I put the fusible backing on the fabric pieces. Here's the leaf. These and I need batting and my background. And so now we're going to go to the machine. Before we do that, can you see this? If I do it this way? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you scoot it back a little bit. Okay. There? Is that good? Yeah. All right. So in here, in this, we're going to do the block by block again. Um, so you're going to flip back. I use, these are great things for my... Kind of looks, um, sorry, to, here's my, here's page five, block by block. This is an applique block. So we're going down here to the applique section and we're going to follow along through uh, these, not the pieced blocks, that's for like the flag is pieced and this little number three is pieced there. 
So the apple came, most everything, the flour, the cake, the cherries, the watermelon, the pie, those are all apple K. So it means you're like sewing some fabric down, you're satin stitching around the fabric, you're gonna cut it away. Um, and so you have like a different fabric background on top of another background. But, so this is the applique block directions we will follow. Um, so on my machine, I can put the two files together because the files, obviously I need the cherries file here, but behind that, I'm going to use the wavy four, four by four vertical design um, on that. So here is my cherry block. So I had, I went horizontal with the stripe, background stripe. I mean, you could go vertically too. Um, and then here is the background quilting here. And then of course the applique cherries are on top of that. So when I go to the machine, I'm going to load the wavy um, background quilting and then I'm gonna import the cherries on top of that. So it'll sew the background and then we will do the placement of the cherries at the machine. So it's gonna sew the background first. Okay. All right, so, um, so you kind of flip back and forth between this page five and here as you, as you go. Okay, so, um, all right, let's go to the machine. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, we're here at the computer. Computer, this is computer slash sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have my... Kimberbell Sweetland of Liberty. So everybody's sewing machine is different. Um, mine is older, an older Bernina. So, uh, uh, so it doesn't have necessarily all the fancy bells and whistles for the file names. That's a problem sometimes. All right, so we want the four by four vertical, which is gonna be this one here. Um, I just know that's the four by four vertical. All right, so my oval hoop is 145 by 255, so I have the right hoop. All right, so on this, um, on my machine, I hit this add button here, and then I can add a file, which I'm gonna add the cherries on top. So give it a minute. There's a lot of files in here. And it takes a slow second, not a hot second. One Mississippi. To load. One Mississippi. <laughs> It'll probably take twice as long. Oh, there we go. Okay, we want the cherries. So we're going to add those, and it should be good. So I can see here that there is the wavy. You can almost see it through the grid lines. I guess I can turn the grid lines off. So can you see the yeah. wavy background design and then the cherries on top of that? All right, so we're going to hit OK. It wants the hoop. We're going to coupon which has the stabilizer in it and okay so we're going to stitch out of the okay oop, go over here sorry for the instructions so we are going to um hoop the stabilizer follow the machine manufacturing instructions um we've loaded the quilting design which was the wavy vertical and the cherry, which is the block embroidery, um, into the machine uh, with the block design. Um, that's the cherries on top. Um, so that means the wavy is behind it. Um, begin the batting placement line. So that's what's going to do first. We're going to begin the batting placement line. Okay, so these are all like steps two, three, four to show you that this would be cherries on top of the wavy there. And then we're going to switch out the placement. So I have green in here just so you can see it. And this screw up. It does not like the stitch on the batting. Turns out, 
Mom's machine does not like to sew directly on the stabilizer. So, it's camera shy. It doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> so, we've gotten most of the, uh, what do you call this? The batting placement line. There we go. You can pretty much figure out where the batting placement is. <laughs> and so we're just going to move on to the next step. What is it? Step two? Step, step six. No? Um, we're going to step place six. Place the project batting completely covering the placement line. Show where the placement line is. Go ahead and show that. Step six. We're moving on to step six. And yeah, th we've got that much, which is, in which is impressive for this girl. So... <laughs> She just does not like batting or sewing through interfaces. So notice that the batting piece is quite size uh, bigger than the the box, the incomplete box square <laughs> that's there. Yes, I rectangle. am a geometry teacher. What is that? It's a square. square. <laughs> it is also a rectangle. <laughs> okay. Oh, we have to rethread. Okay, sorry. If you want to learn how to rethread a machine, here you go. Yeah. Sure, these machines are newer. So fancy. So See, I'm you. Bonnie, <laughs> named after my mother. This is my uh, hand me down. Well, not a hand me down. My my cool. mother passed away, and I inherited her machine. And pretty much during COVID, have taught myself how to machine embroider because. Through watching Kristen on YouTube and other people have helped me learn how to uh, do this with machine, this machine. So I'm sure a lot of people are more experienced than me. <laughs> All right, so we're on stitch um, the batting tack down line. Um, Number seven. We're just going to skip ahead to the next line. All right. Okay, come on, Bonnie. Yeah. Bonnie has been used uh, a lot lately. Um, she's done many, many projects, and she is going to go in for a checkup tomorrow. So, not soon enough. She really needs to be cleaned out. All right, so it is... Stitching the batting down. Stitching the batting down. I do know that oh, much. I guess I could speed this up. <laughs> there. I don't, it grips well, so I don't tape it down, but you could use tape and tape it down if you really want to, but it's really not going to shift anywhere, um, because, you know, it's going to not slide around on the interfacing, so, um, then we're going to take it off, and I always want to put it on a flat surface, so, like, I have these, um, one side's rotary, one side's ironing, and I just put them on my lap. And just take a pair of scissors. I like to have the, what do you call it, the duck bills on <laughs> to the stitching line. I don't know. Um, sure. Trim around very close. To the stitch line. Yay. All right, now we're going to go back in and we're on trim the batting close to the stitch line, stitch the background placement line, which is going to be a quarter of an inch out from this, which means it's going to stitch on the interfacing again. And Bonnie probably will not like this. Come on, you can do it. She probably will fray her thread because she does not like to stitch your interfacing lately. It's one of the reasons why she needs to go into the shop. Well, come on, Bonnie. She's gonna make it. She's gonna make it. <gasps> no! no! Well, yeah. Okay, well, I can see where it is. So I'm good. Um, there you go. Yeah. That's impressive. We're good. We made well, it, did what? Oh, not quite, but that's okay. About three quarters around the circle, or circle, oh, circle. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> square. Sorry. It says you is going to be a math teacher as well. 
All right, so we I was going to do mine um, horizontally because I think with uh, the vertical uh, background quilting and if I went vertical on the stripe, I mean, I just, I like them going opposite, opposite directions. Perpendicular to one another. <laughs> Good math terms. Thank you. All right, so I'm just going to make sure that that's somewhat straight on there. I'm not going to get too particular, but, you know, just kind of run my finger along the batting there so I can kind of, like, see, okay, that's kind of running horizontal. Like, it's not, like, really crooked. Crooked. Okay. All right, so I do have to make sure that. Oops. Which one is this? a little too much bother. All right. Put it back on there. Do you want green stitching for this? Um, it's okay because it's just a basting line. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's not going to show when you put the pillow together. And Is this number nine? I don't know. Stitch the background placement line? Yeah. Number nine. So again, it sticks uh, pretty well, so I don't see a need to tape it down, but you can always use paper tape and tape it down if you wanted, if you were afraid it was going to shift, but. Alright, so, um, so place the background fabric right side up, completely covering your placement, stitch the background fabric basting stitch. This is not a cut line. Now it's, see how on the screen it's now gone to the background. And so whatever color you want to, I am not going to stitch the background. I think you should do green. Oh, really? Yeah, do green. No. Oh. See what it looks like. No. Well, what did you have on the actual pillow? It's white. Or you could do a light, I might do a light gray. I think you should do green. No. I'm going to do this light gray. No. We're being so much alike, we don't agree on everything. <laughs> I think green would have been cool. It's a patriotic pillow. Okay, but green matches the leaves and the stem. You can choose to do whatever <laughs> color your little heart is. Purple! Alright, so now I'm going to start this and then um, I don't know how long it'll take to stitch. Right right. So it looks like uh, so it's going to take two minutes, so we will record. All right. So there's the background vertical line four by four quilting. So now, as you see, it goes to the green leaf. So uh, you're finished with step 12, and then step 13, follow the blocks and border instructions. So since you're doing the cherry block, we're going to flip to page 18, which is the cherries. And again, we're doing block by block. So it says load the embroidery file, which we had already done. We're going to start off, it's gonna start off by stitching the uh, green leaf placement. So I am actually going to um, stitch, I'm going to, I don't have much green on here, but I'm going to switch thread and put the green bobbin and green top thread in. We're going to do the step number two of the, on the cherries, page 18 to state, to do the green. I switched a green bobbin and green top thread. Three, place the leaf fabric right side up. Okay, remember we put the um, the backing on here, the fusible backing to uh, give it some more stability. Turn it whichever way you want on the leaf. I guess I'm gonna just go diagonal here. Um, I don't tape much down because it doesn't do much shifting. So. So 
I'm going to trim real close to the stitching. Um, this is just, I believe, a, it's not a satin stitching on this sleeve. It's just a decorative stitching. So, yeah. door off. She does like her door off. She does not like to keep her door on. I don't know why. She likes to pack up more when her door is on. So, for video purposes, I put it on. So we can take it back. <laughs> she just likes to be exposed. That's why. <laughs> camera is now in a permanent position to be able to see what she is sewing. All right, we quilting, are, sorry, quilting. That's are right. on step number seven. We finished the leaf detail. It's on step seven. We've switched. Alexis is signing out and going to bed. We switched to a red bobbin and a red top thread because we're going to start stitching the cherry. This is the cherry placement line. You don't need to have red for placement lines, but it's just easier. Less thread change. Leather cherry, and so I'm going to um, put the leather. Now this is kind of slick; could move around. So um, you're just going to make sure you cover up that placement line completely. You could put a piece of tape on there. Tape it down to the side. Okay. I don't know. I just always hold on to my tails. trim close. If you keep the scissors, um, like come kind of like this, um, tilted to the outside of the cherry, not to the inside of the cherry. As you cut, because the cherry has a white background, sometimes when you cut it, you can actually see that white background. And so if you kind of tilt them, um, a little bit. It kind of gives it a, a, like, I guess a beveled edge, um, to kind of hide that white. Sometimes it doesn't work so great, especially if you're working in small areas. Sorry. I'm trying to do this and kind of keep it on the camera. I wonder what kind of filming equipment Kristen has for this. <laughs> I obviously don't have. So, almost done. There we go. Alright, so, yeah, not bad, because the white doesn't show too bad, but I noticed that when I cut on the blue last time, because of the white on the background. If you don't keep the scissors tilted in the right direction, you get more white showing on the front. 
Um, but there is a satin stitch on this one, but it was, I think, on the pinwheels. Uh, yeah, it doesn't do a satin stitch on the pinwheels just because of the small detailing on it. And if you um, didn't bevel it the right way and cut it the right way, you saw a little bit more white than I, than I liked. Um, but nobody else was going to notice but me. All right, so now we're on step... Um, I trimmed the leather on 10, so we're on 11. It's going to put the other cherry tack down, or placement line. to place the right cherry fabric right side up and so we're gonna sew the tuck down stitch for this one I don't know I just don't take a lot sometimes and I don't think it's really gonna shift probably not a good idea someday I might end up sewing my finger Gonna trim um, we're gonna trim around the fabric off around this one now it's kind of awkward normally I put this in my lap I'm trying to keep it on camera I don't know if I'm doing too much detail in this video or not enough. Alright, there we go. Looks pretty good. Sometimes if you don't get it close enough, you can go back and you have a smaller pair of scissors somewhere. I think it'll be okay. I don't really know where the smaller scissors is right now. and you can get it with a smaller pair you can uh, get in there a little closer and trim that a little closer on those small pieces but I sorry don't know where it is so we're just gonna it's gonna satin stitch so kind of give me some leeway all right so now we're on um, eight so you definitely want to make sure that you have uh, your uh, right color in there to make, I mean I just used red for the placement and all that, so it was fine and ready to go. Okay, so the satin stitch, stitching finished. Um, that was, again, step number 15 on page 19 um, and now it's gonna go I've switched to black um, it says gray in the color chart in the book but I did my last one in, in black too and I thought it looked fine so I'm gonna do the stems um, now uh, for the cherries and um, I went to black in the bobbin and on top and so I'm gonna stitch that out and we're almost done this is actually the last stitching part to this.
done stitching. Let's take it back to the mat and square it up. All right, you ready? Yep. Okay, so step 18, last step, um, well, 17, remove um, black from the hoop. So we're gonna go ahead and take it out. So we're all done. Um, and we have orange pop rulers, but if you don't have an orange pop ruler, um, like you can just use, you know, square ruler. It says uh, you're gonna use, um, you're gonna visually center it. So here we'd visually center it. And which basically is the outline there. And then um, you're just going to um, cut it out and then you're ready. I just threw mine in a pile until I was all done. I actually didn't trim mine up until I was done with every block and then I trimmed them up. But And then you're ready to go on to the other block. Pause. Oh. So hopefully this was helpful and um, sorry, it's the first time making a video. <laughs> so not as good as Kristen does. I don't know how people do this very well. Even after being a year of virtual being a school teacher, I'm still not used to this videotaping. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Good luck.